So sometimes while researching, you find the craziest of stories that have all the drama of a Hollywood movie. So this week on the 11th OVC, the story of Horace Day's poncho tent and why you probably haven't heard about it. So the story starts that while the army was eyeballs deep and trying to figure out how to shelter the hundreds of thousands of new soldiers early on in the war and trying to move away from the Sibley, the common A tent, or even the wall tents, there was an entrepreneuring man by the name of Horace Day who had invented the idea of the combination poncho and shelter tent. And the one thing that helped him is he caught the eye of General McClellan. Well, actually, he pitched his invention, not pitched it as in verbally, like actually pitched his invention of the poncho shelter half tent the combination pizza hut and Taco Bell. A right in front of McClellan's headquarters in the Army of the Potomac, which camped near Washington, D.C. at the time. And after a month of catching the eye of command staff, General McClellan decided that Day's poncho tent had the advantage of minimizing the load of the soldier by combining two things together, which was his personal tent and rubberized rain gear for the troops. Now, of course, on a side note, I have to be honest, General McClellan was already predisposed to the idea of using portable rain gear as tintage for troops because he suggested this exact same thing to the Army back in 1859, right alongside his recommendation and eventual adaptation of the new cavalry saddle and tack. And of course, with the popularity of rubberized items taking off, McClellan and his senior quartermaster officer, which was Brigadier General Stuart Van Vleit ordered 5,000 of Day's poncho tents the combination pizza hut and Taco Bell. by October of 1861. Now, one thing to note about Horace Day's invention is that three soldiers actually shared this rubberized poncho tent invention, not two, which meant when they ordered 10,000 of these new inventions, that means 15,000 pieces were actually ordered. Now, enter the antagonist of the story, which is the new quartermaster general, Montgomery Meg. Despite going along with McClellan's request, Meigs had some huge reservations on Day's poncho tent. So as soon as he took over, Meigs was inundated with new requests to try to push this new invented rubberized uh, item that could help with rain protection of the troops. Now it must be noted that Meigs kind of got rubbed a little the wrong way because Horace Day went directly over him and went to McClellan instead. Additionally, in a letter written in November of 1861, it's clear that Meggs saw Horace's invention more as a poncho than actually a shelter half or shelter tent for the troops. He states that the rubber blanket is limited to a certain weight and it fixes its size. And then he goes on to focus on the poncho flap covering in great detail and ends his letter with, if the material cannot be made to compete in price, then the other shelter tents, it should not be used. Again, he goes on to say, I have seen no satisfactory evidence that it is better than equally well-prepared India rubber. Either way, Horace Day sent out to actually deliver on his 10,000 order, which actually was about 15,000 pieces. Now, what's interesting to note is that his tent was 70 inches by 60 inches, which was relatively bigger than the standard shelter tent you got throughout the war. Additionally, Day's tent had a row of buttons on one side to be attached to the other with two grommets on the other end for hemp tent pin loops. However, by the end of 1861, Fuel trials and experimentation convinced Megs that the personal rain protection should be separate from the shelter of the soldiers and moved away from the combination poncho and shelter tent altogether. Oh. But one issue Megs had to deal with was Horace Day's popularity and the popularity of his invention with not just the general staff, but some of the troops in the Army of the Potomac as well. And like I said earlier, it is widely speculated that Meggs was definitely rubbed the wrong way because Horace Day and also even McClellan himself completely bypassed the quartermaster department and how they procured and obtained uh, the order of the contract for these halves or shelter half poncho tents. And since Meggs decided to go away from the combination idea, he had to find something wrong with Horace Day's invention to have an excuse not to continue ordering them. Now, of course, as the story goes, as Horace Day delivered about half his order, Meggs came back to him and said that his product had not been sufficiently tested, especially in cold weather, and that he must provide samples in order to go through winter field trials. So now Meggs may have thought he had Horace Day based on the previous characteristics of the early Indian rubber or painted pond 
ponchos. So we actually had a review board put together in January of 1862 to test this and other products in the harshest conditions of the Eastern winter. What were the results? Well, the review board stated the following. The board is of the opinion that the shelter poncho tent by Mr. Day is the best submitted and is recommended for field use. So of course that wasn't what Megs wanted to hear. So then Megs reluctantly said he would order more of them, but specify not more than 20,000 because Megs only planned to give them to the cavalry under the original proposed design and intention from George B. McClellan. Now Megs was hoping this would get everyone off his back since he was going with McClellan's original intent and then Megs couldn't then be accused of going against the recommendation of the board. However, Meg's got more bad news as far as trying to push Horace Day's invention in the wayside because he got a letter from George B. McClellan's staff saying, oh no, we didn't intend it just for the cavalry, we actually intended it for the whole army. So of course, at this point, Meg's was even more irritated that McClellan was going over his head, completely bypassing the quartermaster department and not allowing his department to do what it was designed to do. However, after that, the tide shifted. In fact, Meg's, in addition to just fate, turned against Horace's day's invention of the combination pacho tent. The first thing that happened is that Meggs wrote a letter to the Secretary of War stating that he cannot recommend spending more than a million dollars on this item when the army is already providing tents to soldiers and other methods. Which of course is not entirely true because Meggs went on to spend more than two million dollars in getting other types of tents as well. And unfortunately, at the same time, a handful of days poncho tents came in from the field after a heavy and cold rain, and they were completely cracked and broken and utterly worthless. This negative report from the field was all Megs needed to then stop all orders from Horace Day and his contract, ending the idea altogether. But of course, Horace Day went on to fight for his invention. In fact, he went on to say that the ones actually in the negative report were the original trial ones that he actually had just painted cloth. Uh, and he actually said that he'd been issuing and making the actual India rubber poncho tents since the order even started, which actually meant that the India rubber and the poncho tents that were actually he was producing was far superior than the painted cloth cracked ones that came in by the negative review. In fact, he told Megs that his India rubber poncho tents were far superior than the other type of rubber he was getting from other contractors. However, that didn't convince Megs and poor Horace Day's rubberized poncho tent was no more. So with the end of that story, I'm curious what you guys think. Please comment below. Do you think Horace Day's poncho tent, the combination poncho tent, would have number one, reduced the amount of weight being carried by the soldiers because instead of having to carry a shelter half like they did later, uh, and then a poncho in, or a gum blanket or, or ground cloth in addition to that, they would have combined that. Would that have been a good thing? Uh, or do you think having the slit in the middle of being a poncho would have been made you know, rain and really wouldn't have worked otherwise? And maybe even more importantly, did Quartermaster General Meigs make the right decision or should the troops have had the combination rubberized poncho tents that Horace Day and McClellan tried to get not just the cavalry, but the entire army in general. The combination pizza, honey, taco bell, what? And there you have it, definitely by mid-war, Horace Day's idea was totally long gone. The army had well gone to the idea of shelter halves made of linen or cotton duct or even cotton drill, uh, and it disappeared from there. Let me know below, guys. I'm curious what you think on the combination of rubberized poncho tent, not just the idea that usually when the military tries to combine ideas, uh, it generally sucks at either one it was intended to replace. Place. So comment below, tell me what you think, and of course, until we see you next time, ride hard. I'm at the Pizza Hut, what? I'm at the Taco Bell, what? I'm at the Combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. I'm at the Pizza Hut, what? I'm at the Taco Bell, I'm at the Combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. Wait, we're at the Pizza Hut, what? we're at the Taco Bell, what? we're at the Combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell.